Welcome to Diaspora UA. I'm Oksana Deveda, and my guest today, Yaroslav Romanchuk, politician, economist. Welcome, Mr. Hello, Yaroslav. Hello, uh, I'm honored to be with you. Thank you. Uh, Yaroslav, I want to ask you a very simple question. I know your activity in political and economical life of Ukraine, and not only Ukraine, actually Europe and whole world. I know how famous you are with your excellent programs. You write in many articles about how to rebuild Ukrainian economy, how to help our country to win this war, how to consolidate all possible and impossible power Ukrainian people have to, to bring peace and uh, bright future for Ukraine even after the war. But right now, especially today, we actually have very sad anniversary of Budapest Memorandum, and we understand how those political decisions are connected to economical decisions. And what we have right now after that Budapest paper were signed, which means nothing, we realized just today, we have to avoid kind of similar future mistakes for our country. And we have to be very, very careful be between economical decisions, political decisions, because we know we might don't feel how it works today, but we're going to definitely feel like 10, 20, 30 years from today. So from your point of your view, how do you think we can consolidate our resources, brain, analysis and all smart decision to make Ukrainian economy work better, more productive, more powerful, specifically for helping Ukraine from military side to win this war, to make Ukraine yeah. stronger, what we need to do right now. Uh, thank you for your question. I've been dealing with uh, transition from central planned economy to free market for over 25 years, and uh, we have a lot of experience and data on how to carry out reforms. We have quite a, quite a lot of success stories in the world. At the same time, we know how not to move on forward, because if you apply certain uh, policies, you will end up with oligarchs, with uh, state capture, with the corruption, with uh, the system that benefits 3% at the expense of 97. Ukraine uh, has failed to deliver on one very important uh, element of reforms. It is economic freedom. In 2022, uh, Ukraine ranks 126th in the world, which is uh, Ukraine is not even half economically free. So the land of the three, the country of the brave soldiers and heroes that have been fighting against Russian Nazi aggressor uh, and the whole world admires it. At the same time, we have a very weak Marxist-like uh, uh, economic policies institutions that are lagging behind. Recently, European Bank for Construction and Development published the latest evaluation of how far Ukraine is to the standards of sustainable market economy. And again, we are halfway. The reason we are halfway is that uh, uh, that uh, that's about uh, empowering empowering nomenclatura empowering big government business big state is not the same as empowering ordinary people in the time of war we saw one phenomenal uh, element one unique feature of of ukraine it is the trust uh, among uh, the army, the trust among society, business, and the authorities in the uh, which when it concerns the military operation. Uh, it is very decentralized, it is voluntary, it is based on trust and passion of ordinary Ukrainians. At the same time, we see the opposite in economic policy making. Somehow, Ukraine, which thrives, strives to be uh, the leader of the Western world, to be part of European Union, sticks to very bad, old, and inefficient institutions that we saw in totalitarian Belarus and totalitarian Russia. Hence, we should 
overhaul economic mechanisms and first of all put people entrepreneurs in the center of economic decision making if to do this you don't need to have very sophisticated regulation. You don't need to have licenses, permission system, uh, certification, uh, bans on whatever. You don't need uh, fine tuning of uh, nomenclatura to uh, indicate uh, businesses what to do, where to buy, how to sell, how to manage, because people trust each other. They don't need the government in this form and size and shape. So liberalization and uh, the attitude uh, let leave uh, entrepreneurs and uh, creditors and uh, manufacturers alone, let them do their job is number one policy right now. Secondly, uh, uh, there is a one interesting rating which is called uh, uh, tax hell rating, which ranks uh, countries based on the worst performance of their tax system. And Ukraine in 2020, uh, uh, which is the latest ranking we have right now, is number five in the uh, list of uh, tax hells of the world. That means that we, the system that we have right now is extremely difficult to manage and govern. The system begets corruption, the system begets inefficiencies, and at the same time we, uh, it uh, is very bad in uh, tax collection and in supporting financially the budget and the military operation. Hence we need very simple, universal, flat taxes and we don't need VAT, we don't need uh, corporate income tax right now because the tax base for these uh, taxes don't exist. So we need a lot, much more fiscal freedom right now and we need lower taxes and flatter taxes. Uh, one more element that is very important uh, is uh, monetary freedom or financial freedom. Again, uh, Ukraine has never been in the state of uh, monetary and financial freedom. Uh, Hryvna is very weak, inflation in the country uh, has always been very high and it eroded trust to Hryvna. Right now uh, the uh, currency of, uh, of uh, savings for Ukrainians is US dollar or euro. So let people use any currency they, uh, they think uh, proper, they think beneficial, and do not impose this hryvna based restrictions on both external and internal payments. It's very, very simple. Another element is do not uh, nationalize businesses, do not set prices, do not exercise, don't let government officials exercise their arbitrary power to set conditions for manufacturers because they proved that they cannot do that for 30 years. The same uh, government officials in the time of war, they, they do not have any access to information so they have no idea what they can regulate but the, I, the desire to regulate is definitely very high. But again, if we had uh, a so-called uh, e military economy headquarters, which would consolidate the best minds of the country to lead Ukrainian economy through the war, we could definitely make Ukrainian economy grow in 2023 because as we see right now in 2022, the state of the economy is can be described as catastrophe. You have GDP minus 40%. You have unemployment over 40%. You have inflation over 30%. You have budget deficit over 25% of GDP and you have almost 50% decrease of government debt. This is disaster. It couldn't be like that if we apply different uh, approach to economic policy, which what I offer. I offer uh, people's entrepreneurship. I offer uh, uh, economic decision making based on small and medium-sized business enterprises and I, I offer economic freedom as the fundamental ideology of a new Ukraine. It can be done during the war because if we prepare the institutions for fast 
long-term inclusive economic growth right now, uh, Ukraine would jumpstart very quickly and would uh, catch up with pre-war level within five years. If it did not do that, if we, if the government sticks to its own policy right now, I believe that uh, catching up with pre-war level Ukraine 2021 would take at least 15 years. So let's uh, not uh, uh, play again with Marxist uh, big government Leviathan type of economic policy. Let's uh, entrust people. They know better they are better planners, they are better managers, and of course this dynamism, this unique trust that Ukrainians have uh, to each other would uh, help us uh, move on without licenses, without over-regulation, without unnecessary control of uh, uh, the people who really would like to benefit and to kind of jump to re-overhaul corruption uh, alongside with the system that we get from the West. Actually, when we listen to some of American and Western mass media, specifically now, today, every day when we have war in Ukraine, I don't feel very comfortable. Actually, it feels painful when I main line is like Ukraine has a lot of corruption. Ukraine has a lot of money laundering. And we all know it's not actually true because it cannot be done without other <laughs> yep, so absolutely. Western, it, uh, it, oligarchs it, takes, and... it takes two to tango <laughs> exactly <laughs> if you exactly. lot of money again these are the mechanisms yes. that and you know uh, how it works right. yeah exactly <laughs> especially when some western leaders american and european even sending their children to do that dirty business in ukraine oh, yeah I know you're like are him, um, right? <laughs> chairman of some company. They have no idea what to do. They probably don't even understand how it works, but they work in with names or oh, because this is a son of that guy. This is a daughter of that uh, guy. So we know how it works from inside, but uh, generally it creates very, very not very good picture of Ukraine from Western point. And what we can do to kind of erase that picture, how we should send our message to to those even mass media, to average Americans, because you have no idea how many times people asking me, explain this, explain that, why? And I understand, I understand it works from, <laughs> from, from other side, because without why Ukraine is so de desirable for that kind of dirty business? We know we have tremendously hard-working people. We have huge natural resources. We have such a good land. We have everything to be successful. But yep, all those business people from the West, not very clean business people, they know it too. And they use it for their own benefits. How we can resist, how we can explain the world. This is not Ukraine. You should see it's a different country, not as they describe it to you. How? So the, uh, the logic is very simple, right? First, uh, just imagine uh, the size of the government, functions of the government in the United States and Europe in the beginning of the 20th century. When uh, there was little regulation, no regulation, when tax, when the size of the government was less than 5% of GDP and anybody could do anything because they went to America, land of the opportunities for liberty, pursue liberty and their own happiness. That was the, uh, the way American dream was born, right? Right now in Ukraine, it's not the people's, not Ukrainian dream. This is the dream of, first, on the one hand, Marxists and people who prefer models of big government, which they designed for emerging uh, developing countries of different parts of the world without any understanding of what consequences, negative consequences, they 
would bring in the form of corruption, oligarchs, uh, state capture, uh, injustice, uh, uh, again, um, uh, huge schemes to steal uh, property from, fr from the country. And these are all schemes that were designed by the Western uh, consulting companies, international organizations, because like there are people who are driven by good intentions without understanding that reality is absolutely different from models from economics textbooks and it's that was not probably obvious in the beginning of the 90s but after 30 years we obviously see that this kind of approach if you try to uh, start it again it doesn't matter who what the name of who who the president is it doesn't matter who deputies of the parliament are it doesn't matter who prime minister is the ma what matters is size functions and institutions of the government so uh, in my book i uh, designed a new approach innovative approach to economic policy making for a country like ukraine which is uh, based on the principle of the computer game so level one like Ukraine, uh, this level we don't have uh, quality governance. We don't have uh, a, a high quality judicial system, uh, law abiding uh, law enforcement system. We don't have good police court system. We must concentrate our efforts to deliver this. Uh, it doesn't uh, need like 20% uh, of GDP, right? So on this level, there must be a cap on government spending uh, no more than 25% of GDP. So 25% of GDP, we learn how to ensure the fundamental uh, um, uh, fundamental services of the government. If we have it, uh, uh, and we can measure that by a lot of different tools, like we have uh, world governance indicators, we have uh, uh, trace uh, bribery index we have other indices that indicate whether uh, we the quality of government services or rule of law index for example how strong protection of rights and property rights uh, is so in this case once you achieve certain result there you can move on to like 28 30 percent of gdp threshold again for this it, it's like moving from one to another takes uh, like 15 20 years it's not just one political cycle you cannot do that you can imitate it you can just you know uh show off with numbers but in fact you cannot build institutions so fast at the same time you should definitely separate economic commercial activities from the governmental uh, activities so uh, a government a government official or minister cannot be a, a cannot be somebody who drafts legislation he cannot be at the same time issues licenses he cannot at the same time appoint a uh, head of a commercial government enterprise uh, appoints uh, he appoints a direct uh, inspector to uh, monitor and inspect and fine uh, commercial uh, competitors of this state enterprise that's the conflict of interest that is uh, unfortunately part of the Ukrainian system. We uh, must abolish all this and start from uh, from the very simple premise that uh, Ukrainians cannot change overnight even if, they, if when they win the war. So what must be changed is the powers we grant the government to run the economy. We have, my idea is very simple. When 7 million Ukrainians turn into entrepreneurs, investors, manufacturers, importers, exporters, self-employed people, that would be the most powerful engine in the world. And they don't need any government planning. You don't need MI, uh, METs, they don't need MITs, they don't need IMF to tell them what their best sectors should be because that would be about marketing. Let people who know what the future would look like like we can always see from Boston Consulting, from McKinsey, from uh, Accenture, whatever, uh, let them go to private Ukrainian businesses and do the, and and 
persuade them to uh, invest in this or that programs. So Ukrainian economy for the first time in history must be private property based, must be based on economic freedom and must be based on uh, individual decision making and the initial responsibility for the actions, for the decisions that people take. Yaroslav, I never play video games. I'm not that kind of person, but after your colorful description, I'm getting excited. I would really definitely play that video virtual game just to see how Ukraine can win, how Ukraine is winning in uh, economical war, in political war, and in that very hard and very bloody real war we are fighting right now. Well, Aksana, that's very simple like, in terms of uh, like computer game. It's like level one, unless you fulfill uh, all the uh, commitments and tasks of the first level, you're not let go to level yeah. two. So the thing that we should design, and that's why I wrote one of my books, is called Economic Constitution. Economic Constitution, the straight jacket for the government. Especially it is important to neutralize uh, uh, populism to neutralize those people who thrive and want to distribute other people's money and wealth. Perfect, perfect idea, perfect plan. I just hope uh, those people who listen to us, they will have better picture right now about what is Ukraine, how Ukraine looks today, how Ukraine gonna look very, very soon after big victory. We're going to win. We're going to win from both sides, from economical point, and very soon after that big victory, i absolutely sure Ukraine is going to be blooming, blossoming country, and we would just love it. Thank you so much, Yaroslav. Let's Ukraine the world. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Glory to Ukraine. Glory to Thank Ukraine. you. Thank uh, you. Oksana Davida, Yaroslav Romanchuk, thank you very much for your attention. Take care.